Hey guys, now I made a lot of videos about modeling, how to become a model, how much money models really make, posing tips for men and women, and I also showed you the modeling life in all of my vlogs. I showed you some of the good things of modeling and also some of the bad things. But now I need to be fully honest and I need to talk about the dark side of modeling. The things that you don't know and the things that they don't want you to know. So in this video, I'm going to talk about five shocking truths of the modeling world that they don't want people to know, but you need to know and the world needs to know as well. Let's get to it. Yeah. Uh. I have a dream. That's all I need. I'll make it up in some work and belief. Know what I want. So I'll take it on. I've made mistakes, but mistakes make you strong. First, you need to know about the exploitation of young girls. It might be shocking to you that most girls who start modeling do it at a very young age. And I travel to international countries, especially to Asia, 13 years old, 14, 15. And I say girls because they're not women, they're still kids. I've been doing international modeling for over 13 years. And in most of these countries, especially when I go to Asia, I see these young girls everywhere. I remember my first trip ever to Asia was to Singapore. I stayed in a model apartment and I was invited to an event that they were going to. And when I went to this private event, what I saw, just shocking and it will shock you, young 13, 14 year old girls, 15, with old perverted guys with a lot of money and drugs in the bathrooms. It was, it was just something out of a crazy movie, but reality. Now you got to remember most of these countries, especially from Eastern Europe, most of these girls, they can't speak English. So they go to a whole new country without their parents, without any, without anyone that really looks after them. Of course, sometimes they do allow a parent to go with them if they're very young, like 13, then sometimes a parent will go with them. But that's not in all cases. So they leave their country, they leave school and they go to work in another country to make money for their poor family back at home. This is child labor. And you know, they do underwear photo shoots and videos with other male models. And the worst place where this all happens is Japan. They love very young girls, but they do not like older models. So I haven't seen one girl here that's over 24, 25 ish. Uh, most of them here are around 17, 16, 18, which is very, very, very young. And you know, the worst part about this is that their mother agency back at home and their parents allow this to happen, but they don't actually know what happens once they are in the country. With all the clubs partying, old perverted people with money, this is sick and it is child labor. The second thing you need to know about is sexual favors for work. Now, of course, this does not happen everywhere and all the time, but it happens more than you think. Male photographers, designers, a lot of the professional people in the industry, clients, they make sexual advances to not just female models, but to male models as well. And they tell them they will give them more work if they do sexual favors for them. It's sick. And over the last few years, a lot of models came out and told the truth of sexual abuse and rape. Like fashion designer Anand John, who even appeared on America's Next Top Model. According to The Guardian, he got 59 years in prison for raping many models. Some were 14 years old at the time. There were 16 counts in California alone. There's a lot of cases about this and if you're in modeling, Models talk, you talk and you hear rumors, but then you also hear facts, which is very scary. Over 50 models came out and spoke to the Globe Spotlight team and identified some of these monsters. At least 25 photographers, agents, stylists, casting directors, and other professionals. Big names like Patrick de Mortellaire, David Belmere, and Craig Cadle. 
Andre Passos and Seth Sable. Now this is also mentioned by Model Alliance, who's one of the few organizations that are fighting for the rights of models. If you're a new model, go check them out. They're on Instagram as well. Now, if you're a new model, remember, don't ever go to a photo shoot alone, especially if the photographer contacted you on social media. You don't know if you can trust them. There are many professional predators out there that you cannot trust. And always remember, if you are at a photo shoot or a modeling job, you can always say no to anything if you feel uncomfortable. Don't feel like you have to impress them to make a name for yourself. If they say, oh, go topless, then don't feel like, oh, I have to do this to make it. No. If you don't feel comfortable doing something, don't do it. You have rights. I remember when I first started modeling a while back in Cape Town, there was a very well-known photographer and he took photos of me at test shoots, meaning I don't pay him money, he doesn't pay me any money, we just use it for our portfolios. So we were doing the photo shoot and it became very weird. He asked me to take off all my clothes. I said no. And he said, if you can't take off all your clothes and shoot 100% nude, you'll never be a great model. They try to manipulate you while you're young. I said no and I left. What rubbish. Be very careful. Don't let these people deceive or manipulate you and give you false promises. These people are wolves in sheep clothing. Be careful. Models are not always paid. The modeling world always sounds like glitz and glamour to those who are outside of the modeling industry. Most people think that the models out there are rich, while in fact most of them don't even make anything. Many of my modeling friends are still waiting for their money from an agency that they worked for internationally. They were there for a two to three month contract and they're still waiting for the money after years, not just months, years. They just lie and they say things like, we're still waiting for the money from the client or the client never paid us so we can't pay you. Crazy, right? Agencies take advantage of models. They charge them unfair fees. Let me break this down for you. For any international modeling job, depending on the country that you go to, 20 to 55%, sometimes 60%, sometimes even more, goes to that agency in that country. And then 10% goes to your mother agency back at home. So you only get a little. And then with that money, after your contract, the two to three months, you need to pay all your overcharged expenses with that money. You need to pay for your accommodation, comp cards, transport, flight tickets, agency administration and so forth. So if you don't read your contract, an agency can take advantage of you by charging you unfairly. They do it anyway, even if you check the contract. Let me take accommodation for example. They'll put you and three to ten other models in the same apartment or same house. So you get just a small bed. And then they charge everyone a certain price, which is actually more than the price that they need to pay for the house. So they take the money that's left. Let me give you an example. Let's say it costs them $5,000, right? And there's space for six models. And every model needs to pay, let's say, $1,500. That gives the agency $9,000. They only need to pay $5,000 per month. And so they pocket $4,000 every month. And then after that, there's still taxes to be paid. There's always taxes. And here's something else. Sometimes before the contract, an agency will promise you the stars and say, come, we've got a lot of jobs. Just come over, you'll work because they need a certain number of models, right? Because they need to present themselves to the clients and also online. So they need to look professional and always have enough models. So they promise certain models, the stars, they come over and then they don't get enough jobs. Of course, they have to go to castings first, so they go to castings, but the number of castings always differ. The agency might try their best with castings, but you can't control it. So you don't get enough castings to book jobs to have money. And then after that two or three months, they did not get enough money, so they end up owing the agency money. 
Now you need to know it was not always like this. But right now, there's a lot more models, there's a lot more agencies and not enough work for everyone. It used to be a lot better way back when I started. Bullying. It happens a lot from agencies, from clients and even sometimes from other models. I can't even count the number of times that I saw, especially young girls, in tears because they were abused psychologically. Because model agencies want them to be perfect. You need to be more like that model. You need to be better at posing. You need to stop complaining about this and do your job. Do not talk back to the client. Do what they tell you, even if it's weird things. You need to be skinnier. So go home. You're not going to castings for one week. I've seen agencies who don't even give their models pocket money, weekly allowance, if they are not the correct size. They do measurements every week. And then they're also called names for wearing weird clothes. I remember even when I started, I was made a lot of fun of by an agency in Cape Town for the clothes that I had on because I felt comfortable in these. This is who I was at the time. And they just made fun of me in front of everybody. People in the modeling industry can be very rude and sarcastic, especially if they think they are very important. They're a very important booker or photographer or client. They're very rude and they don't care. And especially some of the big brands, those clients, very puffed up, very arrogant. And they look down on you. They look at models just as objects and not as human beings. They don't care about your feelings. I personally strongly experienced this in Italy, in Milan. Some of those people, worst kind of people I've ever met. Now, this is not the same in every country, so it will be different. But I'm just telling you the truth of what is out there. You can find out probably in every type of job that you get, but it happens a lot in the modeling industry. And then sometimes this kind of pride, arrogant atmosphere gets into the models as well. And it gets worse, especially if they're competing with each other, if they've got similar looks. And they are very rude to each other. Now, these things in the modeling industry, all of these things that I shared is very important and it should be talked about. And there's much more that we can actually talk about. Like the fashion industry is the second largest polluter in the world. But I think that I've said enough to make you aware of it. Share this video with other people so that they will also know and that something can be done about all of this. I'll see you in the next video.